Hola a todos, se trata de un nuevo tutorial sobre Krakatoa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This tutorial is of course in English and this time we're going to have a look at the volumetric particle renderer from Thinkbox software and it is called Krakatoa. It's a very efficient uh, particle rendering system and it can handle very large amount of particles without slowing down your system and it renders them very fast. Since this is a rendering tutorial, we will just build a scene with very basic particle setup. Then we will move on to how to render those particles in Krakatoa. So we will drag in a plane and change the color to something else like mm, let's green. Yep, that will do. We will drop in a teapot and now that's blue as well. <laughs> so let's change it. Okay, now let's position it so we can view our particles better. And that's it. Now let's uh, build up our particles. We'll drop in a standard flow. And we'll get rid of the depot and these two as well. Now let's add in a force. Uh, let's change our particle color to uh, white and we'll add also a delete operator and let's tweak some of the parameters now we'll delete the particles by age and we will tell it to emit 400 frames now let's bump up our upper limit of the particle system about 100 times and we will reduce the viewport percent to 1 and also bump up our particles now let's drop in our forces we will drag in our wind also a drag force alright we will add them in in the force list now let's adjust our wind parameters we'll give it a bit of turbulence a little frequency well that's uh, that'll do for now let's adjust our uh, particle source as well we will inverse the particle flow and reduce the speed We'll make it circular and we want our particles uh, to look like they are coming out of the nozzle of the teapot so uh, we will align the particle source accordingly well let's see how our particles look now Okay, we need to tweak our drag force. We'll make it start from uh, minus 10 and we'll restrict the motion in the z axis. We'll pull it down a little. And also let's uh, push it from x and y axis as well. Okay, that's good for now. Now let's bump up our particles even more. Okay, now let's drop in a, a light source in our scene. We'll just drag in a spotlight. And all kind of volumetric renderers need a light to render the particles. Um, they need a light source to cast internal shadows and if you don't have a light in the scene then uh, you can see the existence of the particles in the render render outputs if you look at the alpha channel but the particles themselves won't be visible
All right, now let's move on to Krakatoa. I'm using a demo version of Krakatoa and if I render now you will see my output will be watermarked. We will wait for our particles to update and here you see. In order to use the free version of Krakatoa so that the watermarks won't be visible, we have to reduce our uh, reduce the resolution of our render outputs. Let's change it to uh, it's 480 by 360, I guess. So let's see. All right, now let's increase our particle amount even more. We will do a test render and as you can see it's taking a while to render and it's it says it's updating the particles and it's not an issue with Krakatoa it's due to the fact that particle flow is a history dependent system and in order to in order to provide the data about the particles at a particular frame it needs to calculate the uh, the data in all the frames from where the particles started generating and once the data has um, been transferred to Krakatoa it will render it very fast the workaround for this is to cache out our particles and bring them back in and once we bring our cached particles back in we can uh, turn off our particle flow or even we can delete it if you want we'll see how to do it in a while but let's just tweak some of our wind parameters right now so we will have a better looking particle system okay let's increase our particle amount even more before we cast them out now from the Krakatoa interface open up the save particles rollout we will remove the channels that are not necessary for this particular situation for example the color uh, we can override the color anytime we want so we will put them to the left side and this will save us a lot of hard drive space we will give it a path a prefix name and save it this red border is just to make you aware that you are casting out particles and not rendering them once you change your mode to render the scene particles it will go away now before we render we need to set our range from 0 to 200 and then we will cast out our particles you can see we have changed our range from 0 to 200 and let's cast them out okay now I will pause the recording and come back when the particles are done caching now that our particles are done caching we can change our rendering mode to render the scene particles and we can turn off our particle flow now you can even delete your particle flow if you want now to bring our cast particles back in we will drop a PRT loader and we'll select any one of the cast particle file and it will load the entire sequence and as you can see here something fishy is going on our particles are not behaving the way they are supposed to so we can easily fix this by changing to load every nth particle and it's a bit slow than loading the first n particles but this will fix the problem as you can see it's updating in the viewport pretty fast and not only that it will also render very fast no matter which frame you are at oops uh, let's me change it to single frame render and let's try rendering it and you see no matter which frame we are at it will render uh, with the same amount of time it doesn't need to calculate the um, particles it just 
caching in all the saved particles and all the saved data associated with those particles. And as you can see how pretty well Krakatoa handles rendering these particles. Uh, let's just override our particle color and as you can see in no matter of time it renders 